The uh, next track is what was the B-side for CMLE Play, but it's also on this album. And it is called The Scarecrow. Three, two, one, go. didn't want that one to end <laughs> that, so that one that one's like at this point very similar to a couple of songs but with it's the same with every song it has a different tw- i'd say like twist to it and this one with like the sort of use of the instruments and what instruments they used to make it really stand out and distinct yeah it's a uh, very minimalist for really the most part it. yeah yeah pretty much that's what yeah. i'm saying with the how less instruments are used, but then the ones they do use are very different from any other song on this on this album. Mm-hmm. It gives it. Yeah, this one had string. Th- this one had strings in it. <laughs> mm. um, but you know, it's it, it, it's one of and again another one of Sid Barrett's like storytelling songs. Obviously, talking mm. about a scarecrow. Uh, the black and green scarecrow as everyone knows i think just again that the way he, he's able to put lyrics in a song just so neatly is very impressive like especially one of the bits where he goes um his head did no thinking his arms didn't move you know that sort of thing it's like he's able to make words just fit in all of his songs so well it's quite impressive i think especially given like i said at the start he does this all with a British accent as well. But yeah, the song contains nascent ex- ex- existentialist themes, uh, as Barrett compares his own existence to that of a scarecrow, who while sadder is also resigned to his fate, such a thematic content would later become a mainstay of the band's lyrical imagery. It's almost, uh, yeah, it's almost like accepting, it's very much accepting an existentialist in a way. The his dead head did no thinking um, is thought to be a reference to the Wizard of Oz and the Scarecrow without a brain. Um, this further deepens conspiracy with a later album, which we'll get to. It's it's very simple in terms of lyrically. It doesn't it doesn't go like huge in terms of its storytelling like the last one did. But it's very much just my life feels like it's, I'm a scarecrow is kind of the point of it, really. I think yeah, I think that line of but now he's resigned to his fate because life's not unkind, he doesn't mind. You know, it's a very zen point of view. Which, given this is kind of like the penultimate song of the album, is kind of really thematically quite, it's quite strong. Because it's kind of... Barrett has talked a lot about life experience and the songs in this album, and the fact that this is kind of where he's leaving himself at the, in, at the end of the day is... 
quite there's a, there's a level of emotion to it i'd say especially given like the sort of almost minimalist quiet take that they do with the instrumental as well because barrett uses six and twelve string acoustic guitars uh in this along with an electric guitar that's very quietly used um of course rich writes on his organ and he uses a cello as well and um roger waters uses his bass and his bowed bass and then nick mason interestingly this is where all the sounds come from he uses temple blocks and he also uses metal cups uh, so that that's mm. why that the percussion is so different than usual yeah a jeb so i think this is so we could say probably barrett's my second significant song and I speak of this from a meta point of view when artists go through certain tragedies uh, in their life such as Bennington from Linkin Park with the last album he was in there were sides of his suicidal behaviour here there were sides of Barrett kind of accepting his fate with his mental health and sides of recluse coming in and I think when people listen to this now, there's kind of a tragedy to the song. And uh, know what's happened to him. Definitely. 100%. But yeah, I really like this song. Especially knowing the meta behind it. Yeah, the fact that like Barrett is the Scarecrow adds a lot to it. I really dig the sort of unique sort of percussion for it, like a... Uh... Again, like using cups and all that for like, for like during the opening and all that and throughout the song. Also, I like how how it sort of goes back to the kind of sixties-ish sounding sort of vibe, I guess. Hmm. Well, like the other ones have still been pretty. It's it's still pretty Pink Floydish with the with the more psychedelic nature of it, but it's still. 60s-ish yeah I get what you're saying this one's very much a Sid Barrett song this is probably the the song from this album that sounds the most like his single work like uh, after the band I'd say uh, I really like the lyrics uh, definitely some, uh, one that I'm going to listen to more just kind of add to my playlist I don't know I, I, I get what you mean by it sounding more like uh, his single stuff because I've li listened to some of it it definitely feels kind of less pink Floydish than uh, the rest of the songs in this album, so yeah. 